All right, 1.2, slope of a tangent. What we're doing is we're going to be looking at different concepts that we learned in grade 12 and applying it to the calculus portion of this course. First of all, recall from the grade 11, a tangent line is a line that resembles the graph at a particular point. So for example, uh, well, let's look at a secant, sorry. A secant line is a line that connects two points on a curve. And here's your example. So we're looking here, and you can see that the tangent line is this line right here, and it just touches the curve, the curve being the blue point, at one point. That one point being the point of tangency. So the point of tangency, where the tangent line hits the curve at one point. The other one is a secant line, and this particular secant line touches the curve at two points. So we would use these two points to find the equation of that secant line. So a secant line passes through a curve twice, a tangent line passes through once, and that one point is called the point of tangency. So slope, back in grade 9, was equal to delta y over delta x, which is equal to y and then you may have learned it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm just going to show you the example here. Now let's go look at that the way the tangent was written there again. Just slowly, we're going to look at that. So it's delta y over delta x. Now watch carefully what happens. You will always have the idea for slope is always two points. So you're going to have two points to calculate the slope. In our case, we use one of the points is x1 and y1. And notice the way it's written. It's written upwards. x on the bottom, y on top. And again the second point, x2, y2. So the x on the bottom, the y on top. And what you do is you subtract. You subtract, you draw a line between all the points, and you subtract the y's, subtract the x's, and that gives you the change in the y's and the change in the x. Now do not mix these up. So x1 and y1 go line up with each other and x2, y2 also line up with each other just so that you do not mix those up. Okay folks? Now knowing that, what does that have to do with slope of a tangent? How can we use this idea to find the slope of a tangent when the really we only usually know one point? That's the point of tangency. Well, a curve has varying slopes and direction whereas a line has constant slope and direction. So what the beauty of that is, is that particular line that we have is gives you what's happening at that particular point at that particular moment, whereas a curve changes constantly. And it's very hard to figure out some important features like the max and min, things like that. So we're going to be looking at those type, those ideas in this course. All right, so we have our slope y2 minus y1 or y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. And what we're going to do is develop the equation of the line from this formula using the general point x and y and x1, y1 from the slope formula. So we're going to use those two points. So we're going to use x and y and x1, y1 as our points. Okay. All right, so we're looking at x here. What's happening here? x and y, that's our first point. We write them upwards, just like I wrote the slope. We're going to use x1, y1, write them upwards in the slope, and we subtract all, we subtract them. And that gives us our slope. What do we do now? Is we are going to take this y. Now, note, I'm going to color this y black for a reason, okay? This y is going to be black. It's black for a reason. This y stays as the variable. So we're going to color it black so that we distinguish it from just any other point, let's say. And then y minus y1, so variable minus y1, is equal to m times, again, in this case, it's the variable, so x minus x1. And we're going to use this formula to find equations. So we're going to use this form, okay? And then 
once we do that, we can either put the equation of the line in standard or in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept, guys, turns out to be that y equals mx plus b form that some of you tend to like. Now, these particular, remember that the x and the y here that are, uh, that are black, sorry, one more, these x and y that are black over here, these x and y, they remain as variables. They don't change because we need an x and a y in the equation to be able to determine any line that is not vertical or horizontal. All right, next. Example one. Given two points, 5, 1, and 6, negative 3, determine the equation of a line in general bracket standard form that passes through these points. So we need to find the equation of the line. So we need A, the slope. So we're going to sub the points for N to M, and we plug it in, and we find out the value of M. So again, one more time, you see the 5, 1 here. We write 5, 1. 6, negative 3, we write 6, negative 3. They're always lined up as the coordinates, okay? We subtract those values, and you get 4 on top, negative 1 on the bottom, which simplifies to negative 4. So that's the slope of the line between that crosses those two points. Next thing we need to do, find the equation. So we're going to sub the slope and a point, say 5, 1. It doesn't matter which point you get. I guarantee you'll get the same equation, but it does matter that you plug it in properly. So we're going to plug it into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and we're subbing it into there, and we find out that y minus 1 is equal to negative 4x plus 20. What do we do now? Well, the question wants it in standard form. Standard form means that the x coefficient is always positive, and none of the numbers can be a fraction or a decimal. And notice down here at the bottom, none of these numbers are fractions or decimals. So we can now move everything over to the side where x is positive, so everything moves, this time to the left side. So you have 4x plus y minus 21 equals 0. And that's your equation in standard form or general form. All right, next one. The slope of a tangent at a point, say x, f at x, using the point x plus h, f at x plus h, where h is some distance from x, is given by the formula, the limit. Now notice that we're talking about here. Normally when we find the slope, we have x, and we have a number pretty close to x, so that it's pretty much the point of tangency. Now, the thing is, is that as this h gets smaller and smaller, so close to 0, h is getting closer and closer to 0, we can find the slope of these point, uh, the slope of these two points by writing f at x plus h minus f at x over x plus h minus x. So this is the limit. Now notice, the tops are the y's, the bottoms are the x's, but notice with these two points, x plus h minus x, the value is going to simplify to h on the bottom. So we can say, justifiably, that the limit as h approaches 0, so basically the distance between x and h is getting so small, uh, sorry, x and x plus h is so small that the h is so small that it's so tiny, it's just approaching zero. It's approaching basically nothing. Of f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. So this here, folks, you guys learned this in grade 12. This is in the advanced functions course. This is new. This is not new, sorry. But this here is new. This limit function is saying, okay, as we get closer and closer so that it's next to negligible, this, if we use this, we can find the uh, slope of any tangent line using this. Working on that, we're going to look at questions that involve this. All right, next one. So we have limit of f at x plus h minus f at x over h. So that's our important part. So we read this as limit 
as the distance between x and x plus h gets smaller and smaller. So it's not x and h, but x and x plus h gets smaller and smaller, okay? So that the h is getting smaller and smaller so that the h literally is so negligible that it's literally approaching zero, okay? The limit as h approaches zero, in this case up here, is the difference in the y values, so your delta y, okay? And the bottom is the difference in the x's, okay? So the x values, that was the simplification of that. And what we're looking at here, this particular equation, is the slope of a tangent. We would use this limit to find the general slope of a tangent line anywhere on a specific curve. All right, so... Um, we're going to look at example two on the next video, folks. So this was number one. Go on to video two to see the second one. Take care.